Hello scrappers and planet lovers, Tin Man here with another video. So today what I want to do is take a look at some of the robot vacuum cleaners. You do find them sometimes on garbage day. They have become more increasingly popular. And unlike your traditional way of vacuuming, these you simply turn on, you can leave the house, they'll go around the house clean and return on their own to their charging station. So these are a great item and they can be 100% scrappable. Uh, I could bring these into the scrapyard as is and get a appliance weight price, which is about five cents a pound Canadian. Each one of these does weigh 10 pounds, so that is great. However, there is items in here that are actually worth taking apart and scrapping and selling separately. You will make more money from doing it that way than bringing it in whole. And there are a few interesting items in here that we definitely want to make sure we divert from the landfill. Each one of these does have a battery, so we want to make sure we divert those from the landfill and the water system. Uh, and the great thing about these as well is they are very easy to take apart. So I'm going to do that for you today, show you how to identify the material, and more importantly, how to separate it properly, maximize your profit, and divert as much of this safely away from the landfill. So I do have here a Bobby, I have an iRobot, I have a Cobot here. So there are different styles and brands. Um, I do have a Bobby at home. We use it all the time. They're great. Uh, and they all are very easy to take apart. So I'm going to do this iRobot for a second. Uh, sake of time, I have uh, turned it upside down, have removed the screws on the bottom. Okay, so there is a little bit of plastic here uh, that I'm going to take off. And right off the hop, the first thing is the battery. This is the battery from your iRobot. This is a spare one I have from my Bobby that you see there. So they do come in different sizes. Uh, here is another little one here. And these are lithium batteries. Uh, you do have to check at your scrapyard. Batteries, uh, depending on the type, are not uh, accepted at certain scrapyards. So I did call a scrapyard in London, Ontario. They will take your household batteries like your uh, A's, your B's, your C's. However, they will not take your lithium batteries like this, uh, unfortunately. Uh, they will also take car batteries and stuff. And those types of batteries, the lead-based ones, are going for about 19 cents a pound. Uh, unfortunately, these ones are not accepted. As well as your little ones like this. These are your little discs that come out of different electronics. Or your adaptable ones like this that go into multiple tools that you have. So all of your lithium ones are not accepted in the London scrapyard that I take it to. However, the one in Sarnia I go to, they will accept all batteries. And they give you about 10 to 15 cents a pound for these. So if I was to add up all of these and all those batteries in there, they are very heavy. I have easily here three pounds worth of batteries. Uh, so that is a great option. Uh, another thing I do want to say is if they do not accept them at the scrapyard, there are free drop-off facilities that will accept them. So for sure, that is another option. Obviously not monetarily uh, beneficial, but environmentally, so they don't end up in the landfill. But your lithium batteries, okay? After that, uh, pulling off the shell. And as you can see, this Bobby, I have already taken apart. It just comes off in one piece. Uh, there are some parts that you can also sell online. People are looking for uh, certain catch basins, if you will. Sometimes the battery, if they are in good workable condition, you can also resell those online as well. So that's another option that you can take. Uh, but some of these, be cautioned or be warned, they can be very messy. The brushes, I've seen some that are just caked with pet hair uh, or dirt. Uh, it's amazing what these things can suck up. So you do want to make sure it is clean and in good workable condition if you are trying to sell it online. But just going to open this quickly, pull off the screws. Uh, if, uh, if I just slide this off, there are one or two more screws that I do have to take off. So I'm going to do that. Uh, I'm going to start with my wheel. And this wheel here, you can see, does have a small motor inside of it. Okay, so both sides do have a motor. Okay, just gonna pull this one off here too. So there are two small little motors that you can see in the wheels. Okay, uh, that is the first thing. There are some po components that are just made of plastic. Uh, I do remove the screws off of these. These are just your catch basin. 
All of my screws I will put into my steel bin. I have a nice little bucket of it. And just to show you, this is my screw bin that I have just from scrapping. This actually weighs 20 pounds as is. And I'm gonna get tin price for this. So 10 cents right now in Sarnia, they're going for 14 cents a pound. So tin uh, is an excellent item and screws are a great way to add up weight as well. Uh, you do wanna check your screws. Some of the screws, if you put a magnet to them, especially barbecues and they don't stick, they can be put into good stainless steel, which is going for 77 cents a pound. But all of these are magnetic, so they are gonna be tin, okay? I'm just gonna pull off this cap. Once I remove it, start pulling stuff off, okay? So again, a little bit more dirt here. Inside of here, there are a couple motors as well, okay? So just have to remove some screws, okay? And what I'm actually gonna do is just gonna actually focus on my bobby. Since I've already taken it apart, just gonna show you some of the, uh, the components. Okay, so there is my plastic. Unfortunately, because I've taken apart, this plastic is gonna have to be going into either the garbage. Some places will take it uh, for recycling. Unfortunately, here where I live in Southwestern Ontario, there is no means to recycle this properly. Uh, some of my thicker plastics are, but this is not gonna be. Uh, I have seen some of my viewers, especially out in the East Coast, say that they will get paid per poundage for their plastic as well, from vacuum cleaners and other items like this. Uh, I have had a couple of questions from people asking me here in Ontario, um, is that true in certain places? Yes, as I said, some people in the New Brunswick area said that they get that. Uh, I did call around different scrapyards here, and they said they once did have a type of um, government incentive recycling program for plastic. Uh, plastic shingles, for example, were another one. However, they no longer do that. Uh, so that is unfortunate. I would love to see the province of Ontario get on board with taking this plastic back uh, and reclaiming it away from the landfill. But unfortunately, this is gonna be garbage for me, okay? Um, here are my parts, okay? Inside of that, underneath that frame, there was a circuit board that you see. Here is one of my wheels. So there is, again, I have two of these wheels that have these motors, okay? As well, inside of that, if I showed you that piece that I just took apart, there are gonna be, right here, two other small motors. So, right here, there are two of these little guys, okay? So I have four proper motors there. Okay, and what I do with those is I will not open those up. I will actually, as you can see, I'll put them into a bag, okay? These for me are too small to open. There is a little bit of copper inside of these, but these right now at a scrapyard are going for 39 cents a pound uh, for copper motors. Uh, so that is an excellent price. And even though these do not look like a lot, they do add up in weight, okay? So for these, um, I will put, um, I don't have my scale here, but I will include in my link uh, or my uh, description how much I did get for weight wise for these motors. Um, some people do open them for that little bit of copper, which would be number two copper. Uh, but again, for me, I will just throw it in. It's not enough for recovery for me. I will just put them into my copper bearing motor. So it is up to you, depending on what you have. Um, again, you do have different size motors for sure. So you can see these little guys come out of other types of uh, apparatuses. There's the other one. This one is from my Bobby as well as a couple little ones like this. So you commonly see little ones like this on circuit boards. So again, 39 cents a pound for these. Just like my screws, they add up in weight. So I have four of those. Inside of that, I do have two circuit boards. Here is my main control circuit board. Uh, I did open it up and you can see right here there are four little buttons. Any type of buttons that you have like this, there is a small trace of uh, silver in these. I don't take the silver out of these. I will actually leave this as is. Uh, on the back there, you do see an MLCC. Uh, I do pull these off. There is a small bit of silver recovery. I have a big container of those that I do store up and I'm hoping to sell them online once I have a whole bunch of them. Um, but your circuit boards like this, as well as this one here, 
Um, there are different categories depending on where you are. Some scrap yards will give you low grade, medium grade, high grade for your circuit boards, depending on the types of precious metals that are on them, okay? If it had gold, for example, I'm just gonna reach across. Here is a circuit board I just pulled out of a monitor. So you notice the gold on this. This would be a high grade board, okay? So paid more for the precious metal. These three that you see, even though there's a small trace of silver and silver on this, um, you're probably gonna get a mid grade for this which is probably about seven to eight cents a pound. Unfortunately, the scrap yards I go to, they only give me one category uh, for all e-waste. E Doesn't matter how much is on it or what's on it. Uh, so it's about five to six cents a pound. So the great thing is, is at least I'm getting something for it. But if there is precious metals on it, like this circuit board, I'm going to hold on to this and look online sources, for example, boardsort.com. There are places online that will buy these at a higher value, so that is a good option to look at, okay? But the reason I wanted to also show this is there are some interesting items on these circuit boards. Because I do not get much money for them, I do pull off some things that are valuable. So for example, these little clamps you see right here, that clamp, all of these little clamps, you will find these especially attached to aluminum heat sinks. All of these are worth taking off. So I'm just gonna pull it off right now and show you. Underneath, as you can see, there are three pins. But if I scratch this with my file, if I can find my file, oh, there it is. Okay, my file, just gonna scratch this for you. And what you're gonna notice underneath you can see the corner there, that is copper. So there are a number of them on here that are copper. Some of them do have the top that is metallic. Even these plastic ones here that you see, they have a plastic top. Once you break those open, they do have a little bit of copper in them as well. So these are gonna give you number two copper price. And I actually just checked before I started this video on updated prices. Number two copper right now in London, Ontario is going for $4.60 a pound. So I do collect these and I have a nice big jar of them somewhere that I will show you. Uh, oh, right in front of me, no. Um, so there is, sorry, I don't know where my jar is, but these are something, I have a 10 pound, oh, right in front of me, they are in front of me. So look at that, 10 pounds right there. Okay, so 10 pounds at $4.60 a pound, all of these different sizes, but these all come off of your circuit boards, so you definitely wanna grab these off for the higher value, and they do add up as you can see there. So lots of those on there. Um, the other thing, this was in the front of the bobby, okay, the cone shape. There are sensors on here that allow the bobby to uh, know when it's hitting a wall or something, or shut off, and What's interesting about this one is, if I show it, there is a couple little components here that are of interest. So here is my little circuit board on the sides, okay, the motors. There are a couple little spots, so there are my little uh, circuit board pieces, okay. Nothing of value on these guys, but again, I can easily divert this from the landfill. All of this wire is gonna give me 60% appliance wire. And so this wire right here is actually going for $2.19 a pound. I did have someone ask me um, what happens if it is metallic inside. Um, so wire like this, sometimes you will get aluminum winding uh, wire uh, on electronics. One way to tell is to scratch it. Sometimes it appears to be aluminum, uh, metallic in color, but appears to be aluminum. If you scratch it underneath the metallic coating, it can be copper. So that copper is obviously gonna go into number two copper, um, or if you strip it, if you leave it as is and it is copper, then it would be my 60% appliance wire, okay? So again, this is the components on it. There's my other motor attached, okay? Uh, and the last thing I do wanna show that goes with that is my little, once I show, um, there are a couple little switches on here. So this was the handle on the on and off switch. The brass, these are two brass prongs. This is what charges into uh, the battery, okay? I have scratched these. They do reveal the brass underneath, okay? 
And other than that, like I said, a lot of wire. There is a small little, little uh, transformer on this circuit board. I'm not gonna touch that little transformer, but I am gonna get this copper prong here that you see. Okay, so another one. Okay, and the last thing, if I look at these, where is, there are a couple small little relay boxes that came off of that one, okay, circuit boards. Okay, very easy, like I said, put them into your circuit boards. Okay, but other than that, very simple, uh, easy to take apart, no real work involved, but I am gonna make more money from these motors. I'm gonna make more money from the little bit of number two copper, um, and I said uh, the battery as well. You do need to check where you take it to because some are recyclable, some are not. So hopefully that answered the question for some of you, the curiosity, what's inside of them. Um, you know, uh, there are definitely different styles uh, that you can get. Uh, resale is a good option if it is in good workable condition. Um, but unfortunately, all three of these I've tested, they are not in good working condition. So better diverting it, scrapping it, than going to the landfill. Uh, hope that answered some of those questions. Please comment down below, like, share, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one. Tin Man out.